Hello, this is Vincent from the Pumpage Network and this weekend I went to Bilbao BBK which was absolutely amazing. If you've never been to Bilbao BBK, it's set on a mountain and the very, very top of the mountain you have the camping area. The mid-level you have the area where all the live music's at and at the bottom is Bilbao itself and that's how you get into the festival. I've had some great positives. It's been an absolutely amazing weekend also. A little negatives which I'm going to go through. So if you do plan to go to Bilbao BBK in the future, you know exactly what to expect. I've been to Benicassim, this is in near Valencia for the last seven years, as you can see here, I'm a seasoned veteran. So when I went to Bilbao, I went with them expectations. Bil uh, Benicassim has won many awards based on its cleanliness and stuff like that. And basically I want to compare both to show you basically which one to go for in the future. When you do go to Bilbao, uh, we drove down and literally it's quite a far journey from ba uh, Barcelona where we're based now. We drove down, we're headed over. There was no signs where we had to go regarding parking. And yes, it's on the website, but it's not very clear. So literally we had to go to the uh, Bilbao Exhibition Center, the BEC, to park. And it was 12 euros for the three days, which is pretty cheap. We're headed down there. And then there's buses outside where you can actually get your wristbands. And once you get the wristbands, uh, you can top these up. It's like the, the digital ones, as you can see there. And the whole, the whole weekend is all going to be through this so you can actually top up your money using the application or this top up station so make sure you can pay with cash you name it the good thing is, is at the end of the festival you can queue up so if you have some money left on your wristbands you can get the money back and it will give you cash even if you pay by card they will give you cash back as well so going up with the buses um the free of charge it's absolutely great but on our first day we headed down to Bilbao we had some lunch looked around the city it's an absolutely amazing city we do recommend it but coming back it took us four maybe five hours and the queues were insanely massive and the buses are not very you know sought out that well and literally we headed at the bottom and we had to go to the top of the mountain we had to queue around this massive building for literally three hours once we got on the bus, it takes us to the middle level where, where, the, where everything happens. Then we had to walk up another 20 minutes to get another bus, especially with the shopping, which is really, really hard. Then queue up again for the camping area to take us to the top. So as you can see, it was stressful. On our first day, we missed quite a bit. But at the end of the day, you know, this is why I'm giving you guys this information now so you know what to expect for the future. So if you want to go head in early, especially on the first night, and I stayed in a campsite for the whole weekend because of this problem. It was just literally, it was a little bit of a problem. I was scared of heading down to Bilbao because of the insane queues and then coming back as well. But the free of charge, it's great. And then once you get used to the system, if you're in a campsite, you'll have uh, two buses which will come through because the lanes are so tiny because you're on this mountain. They only let two buses come through at once. And in most cases, we actually just walk down and it's about a 20 minute walk from the camping area where we did glamping. It takes about 20 minutes to walk down from the top to the mid level and then coming back, it's like at the end of the night, you jump on the buses, but like same again, there's two queues. There's a queue to go down to Bilbao and there's a queue to go up and it takes hours. So be prepared to queue a lot. But once you actually reach the festival itself, and you go in for the first time there's no queues and it's actually the security is really really good there is quite a lot of undercover police obviously to make sure everything's running fine but I saw no trouble this whole weekend whatsoever there was no fights there was no people mashed up on ketamine or anything like that it was actually a very it's one of really shocking for me because whenever I go to Benny Kassim there's always people there's always security there's always a few fights and all that type of stuff but this was crazy it was absolutely amazing it was like the security was great there was no bother walking through uh, to go into the festival there's no searches or anything if you have a big bag they'll just check to make sure that you haven't got any food and drink because you're not allowed to bring any of your own drink into the festival apart from that it was straightforward regarding the parking like i said before you need to park in bec and it's 12 euros the wristbands these are great these are really really good as well i'm going to keep these on with my collection i absolutely love it oh yeah the drink situation uh, this is a, one thing which was a bit unclear to me from the start is that they give you a plastic cup every time you go to the bar but they don't tell you it's actually two euros fifty for each cup and then when you hand it back at the end they'll give you money back so every time I went to the bar it was literally 12 euros for literally like a, a big pint of beer which is expensive and I was wondering why I just thought it was just a festival it's just you know prices are normally high anyway but I was chucking the, the cups away but if, what it turns out is it's a bit unclear it's like on the first night they were charging me one euro for the cup and then by Sunday it was two euros fifty for the for the cup. 
well and they said on the sunday when it all finishes just go to the bar in the campsite and they'll give you the money back i had a mountain of cups and i went on sunday straight after there to get my money back there was a queue of people waiting to get the money back with the cups as well they closed down so literally on saturday night if you want to get your money back you need to get it on at the festival to get your money back because on sunday they disappear and they don't really care i asked people i was uh, asking for management because literally i had about 30 euros worth of cups i've got them in my house now it's just shit happens you just learn about this so if you want to get your money back get them on saturday night security like i said is perfect the entrance is really really quick to get on there i'm just going through my notes the in the campsite at the top you have the glamping area and then you have a normal camping it's beautiful it's up the we were watching a sunrise you're so high up you see the whole of you see the sea you see the whole of bilbao as well it's very very beautiful as well they have their own dj area as well for people in the camping as well and it, it was really really good you had some really good djs in the afternoon so if you just want to relax i stayed in the campsite on the on the friday and saturday i had no problems whatsoever the only issue i would say is the food because it was literally two or three food trucks. That was it. They had a coffee stand, they had a, a burger stand, and they had one which, uh, they had like a breakfast stand as well. And there was one which does like paellas and other food, but the queues were huge for this whole thing. So they were very limited with few food. When I was been in Benin Kassim, there was literally two rows in the festival. Um, they had quite a lot in the festival, but it wasn't much as well. They were very lacking in the food side of things. Drinks, not a problem. You can get a drink queue for about five minutes maximum they had so many drink stands you had people going around with a beer on the back as well which you can pay with your card as well on your on your wrist and it was great it's just the food was lacking so if you are listening to this get some more food in there because a lot of us were really hungry and we're fed up of eating hot dogs all weekend especially in the campsite the showers Benny Kassim, we have a unisex shower where you just go in there, the guys are mixed with the girls. It's always freezing, but it is, it is hot. It's nearly close to 40 degrees in Benny Kassim. But in Bilbao, it's different. And you have two types. You have normal showers, which are in cabins, which are warm, which is absolutely great. And also they have a paid one, which was about, I think it's about four or five euros. You use a wristband to go in there and it was clean toilets, clean, not on the Saturday, unfortunately. Um, but basically when you go through you scan in with a guy and you got uh, left and right girls on the left guys on the right you go in you had hair, hair dryers you had plugs to you know, do whatever you want you had warm showers which was really great so I did that for the first three days and it was great no problems apart from the last day literally I went in because I didn't want to use the uh, communal toilets because you know after a few days in a festival it's not pleasant so I went in there and literally all the toilets and the paid toilets were full of shit I mean literally <laughs> Like this, it wasn't good. And I even asked for my money back. I told the management and then they were like, you're at a festival. So be prepared on the last day. Don't use the toilets, especially in the pay. Just use the, the free ones because literally it is bad. Um, the floors, yeah, because um, the weather is weird. It's like I always go practically naked to uh, Benny Kassim because it is hot, super hot. I did the same on the first day and the Thursday night. I went just in my shorts, went down there, not a problem. But as soon as it hit two o'clock in the morning, especially in the festival, it was freezing. I had to get one of my friends to actually uh, give me the shirt to wear because literally it was that cold, I was shivering. So uh, it isn't hot in Bilbao. In the daytime, it is hot, but in the evenings, expect to be cold. And especially when you're camping as well. And this was a pleasant surprise because if you ever camped in Beni Kassim, you sleep and then as soon as the sun rises at six o'clock you have to get out because it's like a sauna but here was different as soon as it hit like two three or four o'clock in the morning the temperature was so cold that we had to actually sleep in a sleep sleeping bag which was uh quite interesting to, to actually be in spain and sleep in a sleeping bag but then as soon as the sunrise you take it out and you're ready and i actually slept really really well which is crazy for a festival especially in spain as well um what else do we have yeah because uh, the first day we had heavy rain which in the camping it was the floor was just full of mud and everything uh the management went through and got tractors and then laid it all out with like uh wood and stuff like that to make sure people didn't slip so they did actually look after people which was a nice sign as well we had a great dj the lockers and charges that's great so if i was you if you're gonna go uh if you go into the uh, bbk website you can actually order lockers and i do strongly recommend this if you're in glamping it is a little bit more secure um basically because uh, you have to have a special wristband like this to go into the glamping area and you have a security guard walking up every bit so you expect with people who pay money you're not going to get robbed but in the communal bit which is open to everybody i've heard horror stories of people getting their passport stolen and stuff like that for the lockers they're like 25 euros for the weekend and you can pre-order them on the website as well if i was going to do that do 
do it. I ordered a large one and I got all our friends like passports and phones and stuff which is important, money, just thrown it in there and they give you a special uh, like plastic wristband that only one person's allowed to go in there and there's a guy sat there 24 hours a day guarding the lockers as well so you know it's secure. I 100% recommend this as well. The last thing you want is to lose your passport, especially if you're in Spain, especially your money as well. You will be screwed. So for the sake of 25 euros, get a locker. And they have like a charging stand as well where they give you a battery. They give, it's, it was 20 euros with a full charge for the Bilbao branded one, which you can keep, which is, I've got two at home right now, which are absolutely great. But on the day as well, you can actually hire them where you, I think you pay like seven or eight euros for the battery. You use it, you come back and you buy another one. And it's literally, there is big queues with that, but what do you expect? If you are a heavy uh, phone user, bring a big power brick with you if you can do. Uh, but apart from that, the, the internet isn't that great up in the mountain. Uh, normally they have boosters like in Benigasim, like Telefonica boosters because there's so many people here and they didn't have that. So it's like, I was always on what, like one bar 3G. And if I was lucky, I was on 4G as well. Um, the weather, great. Not a problem. Bill Bar Sensor is beautiful. If you get a chance, go down, get down there early. Don't leave it too late because you will queue. Uh, head down to uh, Bill Bar. Uh, when you go down, uh, you can get the bus and it's facing the Bill Bar Atletico um, football uh, stadium, which is really, really nice. And have a look around the city there. There's a few tourist traps to avoid, but we vented out a few blocks uh, outside and we found some great food places and stuff like that. So recommend try some of Bilbao cuisine it's great but I was only there for one one afternoon because I was in a campsite for the remainder I will visit Bilbao again in the future and see the real city but I do recommend it it is very very beautiful and unlike any other place in Spain that I've ever been to uh, the sound no problems at all and all that they have uh, they had like about five different stages they had like one for DJing they had a small one which was like a circle with speakers surrounding so when you're dancing you had the full 360 sound which was really really nice you had the main stage which is great you had a Heineken stage which was next to it so it wasn't a problem getting around as well I heard no problems with the sounds whatsoever I think my bloody Valentine were a bit a little bit loud from what I was told uh, but I was very drunk at that point, so I didn't really care. But apart from that, the sound quality was amazing. Um, no, no issues there whatsoever. Um, what else is the... Getting home. Yes. So, like I said before, is that when you finish the festival, they're very, very quickly, they're going to corner off different areas. And the security guys are a bit pushy. So, be a expect these guys want to go home at the end of the day they've been working a long day so literally uh what expect at like four o'clock in the morning in the main stage area that they're going to push you back just follow it because it's going to they're going to take you to another area where there's loads of like live music uh djs until seven o'clock in the morning anyway but when you finish you got two queues you got one to go down one to go up just remember to go to the right one if you're in a hostel or a hotel head down if you're in camping or glamping head up but you are going to be waiting hours and unfortunately that's it but the people i've been speaking to a lot of people uh, loads of irish people there loads of americans no everyone enjoyed it it's been really good everyone felt safe there was no issues there whatsoever i'm just checking my notes i'm sure i'm missing some other things but apart from that i do 100 percent recommend it um next year already weezer has been announced so i'm going to be booking my tickets uh, for next year i think it's 75 euros early bid but it will bump up to 150 i'll put them in the links below but this is vincent from the pumpage network i'm going to be uh, traveling to benicassim tomorrow so i'll be doing another video next week to show my experiences with benicassim that'll be my seventh year in a row it should be amazing if you do see me there give me a thumbs up Write a comment below about your experiences. If there's anything that I've missed whatsoever in this video, let me know and I'll do a, maybe do a follow-up video later on as well. But stay good. See you in the festivals. See you next time. Bye-bye.